Come with me. Morning. <laughs> Morning on the homestead. I am coming. Hey. You made it through another sweet night. There we go. Who's drinking first, Tilly? Tilly, you're up first. Whoa. Whoa. There you go. Oh, oh. Oh, well, look who we got. Every morning there are certain hey, things to do. Tend to the animals, check the ferments, make the bread, hang out with the baby. And then we have a lot of, actually we have 11 babies now, including human baby, rabbits, goats. And yeah, homesteading is, I don't know, there's a lot of different ways to do it and a lot of beliefs around it. Um, but for us, it's not really a destination. It's more of an experience. It's something that makes sense. And in life, rather than focus on like good and bad, right and wrong, up and down, left and right, you know, blue and red, whatever, I try to focus on what makes obvious sense to me. And just because something makes sense now doesn't mean in the future it will shift. And if it shifts and something else makes more sense, I'll shift to that. Um, but something about growing food, preserving food, raising animals, being connected to nature, foraging, this stuff just makes sense. This is a greenhouse I built last year, and now it's kind of acting as the goat house. I locked them up at night just to keep them safe. Um, we got a lot of predators. Um, although we haven't really had issues for the most part. We had some, we've lost some rabbits to raccoons and, and foxes to chickens, but you know, we pee around the property to kind of set our boundary and also energetically just connect to the land and, and kind of express our space here. But the goat babies have definitely brought in a whole new dynamic. Hey. All that said, today is um, rabbit harvest day. So we have babies, we're not harvesting our own um, rabbits, bunnies, um, but... We have a friend who raises rabbits and she doesn't have the capacity to harvest all of them. Um, so she brings us some and we like to do educational classes. So we actually just have some people coming over today. I'm just going to share to some friends. Um, I like sharing the process and we try to do it as ceremonially as possible and just kind of honoring the animal and um, yeah, talking about different intentions and um, it's never easy. The harvest is never easy. Um, but it feels necessary because if I'm not doing it, someone's doing it. So somewhere along the line that's being taken on and I just really want to take that on. There are obviously a lot of beliefs around eating animals. and you know, Some people are, of course, against it. Other people say if you do it, you, know, you should be harvesting or hunting yourself. Um, for me, you know, all beliefs come from the same place, you know. And you gotta do what makes sense for you. And when I really felt into it, it just felt like, yeah, if someone is gonna be doing the harvesting, and I'm not saying I do this for all of the meat that I eat, but it felt important to be part of the process because energetically, you know, karmically, it's happening somewhere. And I can pretend like it doesn't happen, and I can, yeah, here you go. And I can just, you know, go to the market and act like chicken is not a living thing, it's just some thing that I pick up. Um, but down the line, I know someone is harvesting that animal and it's like, I'd rather take part in the process to see what it feels like. And again, it's never easy through the harvest, but it feels necessary. You're getting big. You're getting big. There's our buck. He has a lot of babies already here and on the way. Come on, come. So the goats get fed first, and then the rabbits, they already have some more automatic feed. So I just kind of top up anything that needs to be topped up. Hey, look at these babies are finally coming out. Oh, look at you guys. You made it to the next space. Need some water. to feed on the farm. These babies starting to eat. 
more solid food. Hey, don't go out there. Hi. Oh, you're a squirmy one. Excited for life. Getting big quick. But not least, chicken friends. How's everybody doing today? They have an automatic water, but I like to give them fresh water every day. This guy knows what's up. There's a day after everybody gets fed. The feeding's never, it's never actually over. So I like to take these guys up the side of the hill and do some more foraging. We're actually in the process of moving right now and I've been collecting some some of my favorite herbs from the side of the mountain. Some Artemisia, a little bit Chiana. There's actually some strawberries here that I found from the neighbor. Lamb's quarter, yarrow, cat mint. This used to be all of this. So this all here is the most incredible compost that I've collected to bring over to the new place. And this is how it starts. So this is actually our chicken bedding, but what's cool is this is hemp. So we get hemp from a local guy, organic hemp. Chickens poop in it and then I compost it. And it turns into the most amazing, deep, rich compost you could ever imagine. These guys love leaves. All right, let's go, come on. Come on. Watch this. Hey. 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 Good job, ladies. So we come up here, side of the mountain, and there's a lot for them to eat and forage. Goats, unlike other animals, they're not necessarily, I mean, they can graze, but they're more foragers, so they like to eat leaves and even branches and all different kinds of plants so i just take them up here and as i collect things for the rabbits like grass they just eat whatever they want hey i just want to eat my face off look at your horns coming in wow So definitely miss this magical mountain. Although our friends are moving in, so we'll get to come hang, but looking forward to the next adventure. Got a five acre farm moving to, and it's just more suited for growing and for animals. But I will say being on the side of this mountain with goats has been freaking epic. You can see how much they enjoy mountain goats. Get about the one and only. Everybody say hello to Mr. Bigu. Bigu is a cat that we adopted. I just saw him, he walked up to me and immediately I knew he was the one. And there's a lot of new babies, so he's getting used to all the new animals, but he's our guardian cat. Oh. Might not look like much, but there's some echinacea coming up. There's some poppy coming up. Let's we'll see if the lavender survives. Um, this whole side of the mountain here, I turned into garden beds. And again, it doesn't look like much right now, but it's designed in that way. I didn't want to disrupt the flow of what was already here. So I kind of found these areas, like you can see. Let's see right here. I have been picking it, but there's asparagus right there. And I just really wanted to add things that would grow well here. What's that? So like kind of to the naked eye, when you come up here, it doesn't look like there's anything. But this will turn into a whole garden bed as things get warmer and warmer. Spring has sprung. And it's really integrated into the mountain and it's not protected, so animals might eat it. But I find the way that we grow, which is very kind of random and quote unquote wild. Um, a lot of animals miss the things we grow and they just keep grazing. Do 
you can see like some onion coming out from last year. I didn't even plant that. Well, not this year at least. You chewing on my foot? Is it yummy? Is that yummy foot? That's my big toe. Something that's pretty amazing about where we live right now is all this growing here. It might not seem like much, but this is all grass. And this is all alfalfa. So this is rabbit heaven right here. It's just growing. I don't water it. I don't have to do anything. But just pick some. Don't pick it all. I'm going to keep it growing. But it's quite amazing how much alfalfa, how much grass is growing. And will grow for pretty much the whole season. I give that to the rabbits. They are happy. Careful where you're going down there. Look at all the night in the grass, all happy. Look at all the bunnies. Look at mama. <laughs>